Hi guys, it's Anders. In today's Logic Pro tutorial, we're going to look at the different time stretching algorithms and what material is best suited for each one and a couple of little hacks and tricks we can do with those. So let's get into that. Okay, so here we are in Logic. Now, if these videos are helpful for you, please bash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel, and if you have any other ideas for videos you'd like to see, throw those in the comments down below. So what we're going to go over today are the different types of time stretching and flexible audio or elastic audio that you have in Logic. And to do that, I'm just going to take a small part of this track here. And we're just going to take the main drum loop, which is going to sound considerably different when we've soloed. And that's what we're going to play with. And I'm just going to show you what you can do time stretching wise with that. So what we are going to need to do is delete one of these ones next to it and preceding it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is activate the flex time. Now there's two ways we can do it. There's a little switch just up here, or we've got Command and F, which will activate it on the selected channel. And you'll see there that this little icon has switched on. If we expand this out, you can see that you've got the different menu here that appears. This currently says monophonic. Now there are a few different types of flex time. You have automatic, monophonic, slicing, rhythmic, polyphonic, speed FX, and uh, tempophone FX. <coughs> now each one does something slightly different. Most of the time, you're going to want one of the top three potentially rhythmic in this case. Now we're working with a rhythmic piece. We will be looking at that shortly but I'm just going to go over the differences between automatic and monophonic etc. So firstly we can select automatic and you will see it comes up slicing audio and this now looks similar to what you'd expect from a rex file and your editor changes as well you have some different options that you can do here when you're selecting and you can do things as simple as grab this particular piece of audio and move it to another location, adjusting the flex of everything else around it. So we can have some quite weird things happen. Yeah, it gives us that bit of flexibility. Now you could change this slightly and have it so it just affects that particular drum hit instead. You do that by going lower in the selection, whereas up here it will take just that note and it will shift it around in a certain selection. You can add slices in as well. We could add an extra slice in here and extend that out or bring it back. And that allows for some really subtle correction. If you go right to the end of the piece of audio, you can shrink the whole thing down and double time it. But we can go the opposite and make it slower. Now, depending on what algorithm we choose, we're going to have different effects taking place. So let's go over those. So these different types on the left hand side work slightly differently. Now, if you just choose automatic, you'll see that it then defaulted to slicing. What automatic does is it looks at the audio presented to it, whether it be mono, stereo, and then the type of material in it. In this case, there's lots of rapid transients. So it detected that slicing would likely be the best method for it. And that's all the auto does. It chooses between the others. If you go to monophonic, this is perfect for something like a DI'd baseline, something that's a single channel that will require different type of adjustment to something that would be polyphonic. And you see here that it stretches the audio 
whereas previously it was slicing. So we put it back on automatic. You see it's created a slice in the audio here, whereas monophonic stretches that piece of audio. Slicing we've just looked at an example of, it creates all these individual slices and if we move apart it separates them at those slide markers. Rhythmic is very similar to slicing, it's going to detect the transients, however it will also work with stereo audio and it will allow us to stretch the audio as well. allows us to very quickly create new types of rhythms. Now polyphonic is for more complex material, things that contain chords or perhaps multiple pieces of audio, so a whole mix if you're looking to time stretch a whole track to fit in with a DJ set, something like that. That's where polyphonic would come into play and that works very similarly to the rhythmic. Speed is then an FX type plugin. If we are to adjust as such. And lastly, the tempophone is like the old slowing down of a piece of tape audio. It adds quite a lot of noise and a strange effect. So those are the different types you can have. We're going to put this back on rhythmic for playing around with this. Now, as you've seen in here, you can adjust it on the fly in here, allowing you to really quickly make new rhythms and adjust particular sounds just on the fly and quite quickly. You can press E or double tap, and you can also edit it within here in the editor. You can either have that on the track or file option. You can edit within both, slightly restricted in the file option, but it is the best method for then bouncing the piece of audio out separately as well. Because you can do it directly from here, revert to backup and things as such. It, bear in mind if you're in the file side, it is editing that file, it is destructive editing. Whereas in the track, we are non-destructive. And this gives us the same thing we had in the playlist up here, except in a larger, more playable window. And if you play around with that and make new rhythms, if you then go back one tutorial, you can have a look at the bouncing out audio and you can quickly create new rhythms and bounce them into new pieces of audio instead of having all the flex time processing happening within the track, which is much more efficient. So guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, bash a like on the video. If it wasn't, you know what to do and I will see you on the next video.